Hello and welcome to another Naughty Egg Draw. I'm Jake and today is our third video of our four part series on how to make an animation. And today is the arduous task of animating all the in-betweens. So we did see this process a little bit in the last video when we were adding the last set of main keyframes. So with doing all the in-betweens, all we're doing is taking all the main keyframes that we created and drawing all the animations in between those two frames. Hence, in between. So this is the last step in the animation process before we get to the coloring. Now if you're just hopping in right now and you haven't seen the other two videos, make sure you check that out. I'll have a link below or right up on top here. So let's get to work because we got a lot ahead of us right now. All right, I'm starting off with tails and turning each of the movements into classic tweens. This process is good if you have something that's moving in a straight line. The tween will animate all the in-betweens for you. All you need to do is have the frame that you're on and the frame next to be in a different spot. And then once you add the classic tween, it'll just fill in the gaps of all the in-betweens for you. And the last one I did for him is actually a motion tween. And I did this because I wanted him to be floating in a smooth up and down motion while also moving away from the center. And with the motion tween, you can control the path of the tween. Now I actually regret doing this later on with him. What I should have done is actually turned him into a symbol and then animated him in the symbol. The reason being is that when I turned each of these into a tween, it made it more difficult to start the coloring process later because each of them became its own symbol. I was just working and started to do the tweens just so I could show you guys how it worked and I wasn't really thinking about the problems that it would cause later. So a word of advice, if you're going to do tweens, make sure you do all the coloring and lip syncing first and then you can just tween the crap out of it. I'm sure if you're getting into animation, you've heard the words in between or tween or tweener at some point or another, but you may not have a clue on what it means. So the term tweener comes from early on in animation history. If you were a tweener, you were the guy that may have probably just started at a company or your skills weren't as good as the lead animators. Your job was to go in and create all the drawings that were in between the pictures that the lead animators drew. This was good for people who were just starting out because you didn't have to be the best artist in the world because these frames were only on screen for fractions of a second. Now this process is still a thing when you look at larger companies like Disney, but thankfully with technology we are able to make small animations on our own and do all the mainframes and in-betweens ourselves. When working with 2D animation there are two main forms of animation, frame by frame animation and tweened animation. So this animation that we've been working on is mainly frame by frame, which means you're going to go in and draw each frame by hand as we did with Sonic. But as we see with Tails, we have a tween animation, and this is where the computer is going to create the frames for you. Now they both have their advantages and disadvantages, and as you begin to animate more, you'll start to pick up on what areas would work best to be tweened and which parts would work best to be frame by frame animation. A good rule of thumb for me is that if you know that the part is going to have some extreme motions, frame by frame might be the best bet. If it's going to be basic motions like tails, you can use tween animation it would work just fine. Now just like the last video, you will want to utilize the onion skin tool that's right above here. Remember this is a tool that will help you see the frames before and the frames following it. But you don't always have to keep it on. It can become overwhelming at times, and you'll see me turning it on and off here and there. Sometimes it works better for me to do the old school way and flip back and forth from each frame. And a helpful tip, if you ever want to just move a single frame at a time, you can just use the carrot brackets to move left or right. So when I'm working on in-betweens, I love to just zone out and work like crazy. So what I normally do is I end up throwing on a podcast or an audiobook or something that won't get me distracted by visual things. Everyone works different, but if you really want to work fast and just zone out, I don't recommend TV shows or movies. Because even if you've seen them before, you have a better chance of looking away and just watching it here and there and it can really kill your flow of work. I actually enjoy doing in-betweens because of this aspect. You aren't as worried about how it looks and you don't have to make it look perfect because these frames will be on there very quickly and you'll hardly see them. The in-betweens are just frames that will fill in the gaps to keep everything looking smoother. You start using things like squashing and stretching to make faster motions look smooth. And it can cut the time in the process so you don't have to animate the object in every single frame. This is because our eye can only pick up so many frames per second. So if you are following along and making your own animation and you're finding the whole process very daunting, I will have a video on how to make your first simple animation using the kite method. And there you will learn how to use the squash and stretch method in a more in-depth way. So if you are struggling, make sure you stick around for that video. That way you can watch that video and then come back to this series and have a much better understanding of what's going on. 
With that being said, just remember to stay loose and have fun and just zone out during this process. And I'll be back when the in-betweens are done and we get into the lip syncing. Now when it comes to lip syncing, it can become a bit daunting to do. It takes time to really understand what mouth shapes go with what sound. For the sake of time, I am going to zip through it on this video, but the next video is actually going to be a bonus video on how to do lip syncing. Just know it will take many times of doing this process before you really get good at it. I'm still polishing up that skill, so just remember, practice makes perfect. So at this point, you will probably want to turn off your podcast or TV, even though I told you not to use TV, because you really want to focus on the sounds that are coming out of the audio that you're working with. Too much sensory overload can make this process about 10 times harder for you. If you're like me and you do hate silence while working on stuff, you can try putting on some really soothing background noise or music from YouTube. Just make sure you have it turned down pretty low. So the best way to look at doing lip syncing is how would your mouth look when you're actually making those noises? You can hold up a mirror or use your fancy phone machine that also has a nifty little camera on it and snap a picture of your face while making that noise and you can work off of that. When I'm doing this process, I am constantly making noises that resemble the sounds I am hearing and drawing how I think my face would look at that time. If you live with family and you're too embarrassed to do it, just make the sounds under your breath or just say fooey to what everyone thinks around you and just do it as loud as you can. I've done this process while out in public at a coffee shop 
I just don't give a flying fadoodle of what people think around me. I mean, I don't really yell out the sounds, but I will make like quiet b b b sounds when I'm out in public. I don't really care what people think. Now, you don't have to draw every single motion of the mouth when you're animating. Take a look at South Park and the way that they animate a mouth. They use only about five different shapes for the mouth to get the point across, and it works just fine. Because remember what I said before, your eye can only pick up on so many frames a second. So don't get all caught up in animating the full motion of a sound like la. Just draw it opening, then with the tongue up against the teeth, and then closed. You don't need to do the full la. It's just going to be extra time you don't need to worry about, and sometimes it can look sloppy if not done perfectly. So this is a good lesson on sometimes less can be more, but don't take that as something you have to do every time. You can find moments where an overdrawn lip sync motion can work better. Like the method you'll see in Spongebob sometimes where they will zoom in and they'll have a hundred times more detail in the drawing. That's a perfect moment to do something like this because it can give a very slimy, over the top comedic look. So just know that there's always a time and place for something, but for most cases when you're animating a cartoon that has a very simple look to it, just go simple with the mouth as well. And everything's almost finished up, so let's go over what happened today. We went a bit more in depth on about what in-betweens are, and we also used a little bit of the automatic in-between process, like classic tweens and motion tweens. We also took a quick glance on good practices for doing lip syncing. And I hope you guys are enjoying these videos, and thank you for watching till the end, and make sure to like and comment below for suggestions for future videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to click on that sub button over here on the left or down below. If you want to enjoy some other videos of mine, make sure you click on them over here on the right. Also, make sure you throw a comment and a thumbs up down below. And like always, keep drawing and until next time.